are joining i hope our voice is audible to all yes ma'am so your english class over yes ma'am no it's going on over ma'am over ishwant are you there ishwant ma'am kadra inka nadustunna english class no vastunnaru ma'am andu ayipoyindi ma'am okay okay uh, english ayipoyindi log in uh, log in with your roll number ma'am sare na otherwise i am telling you if you log in with okay. your name it will be difficult for us to post attendance later don't ask me i didn't give you attendance okay all of you log in with your roll number fast fast madam id rasko anna slide and then in the derivation jaisna kadra idi so judu endo adi slide lo em undu judu avunu avunu jaisna ma leda ninna avunu jaisna ma leda మరి స్లైడ్ పెట్టగానే రాసుకోవాలని అడుగుతావారా ఏముందో చూడవా సరే లెట్ ఆల్ కమ్ దెన్ జస్ట్ క్విక్లీ విల్ రివైజ్ వాట్ వీ హ్యావ్ డన్ ఎస్టర్డే ఓకేమా ఎంతమంది వచ్చారు ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ యశ్వంత్ వాట్ ఈస్ టోటల్ స్టెన్ టుడే హౌ మెనీ ఆర్ దేర్ కంబైన్స్ విల్ మేక్ యశ్వంత్ మ్యామ్ ఎంతమంది ఉన్నారమ్మా ఇవాళ కంబైన్డ్ మెక్సి విల్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఐడియా ఉందా మార్నింగ్ మార్నింగ్ 46 ఐ థింక్ మ్యామ్ ఇప్పుడు ఇప్పుడు ఇంగ్లీష్ క్లాస్ లో ఇంగ్లీష్ క్లాస్ 38 ఓకే మార్నింగ్ ల్యాబ్ ఉండేనా ఆ ఎస్ మ్యామ్ ఏ ల్యాబ్ రా పైథాన్ ఆ ఇంగ్లీష్ 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 ఇవాళ ఇంగ్లీష్ ల్యాబ్ ఉండేనా ఓకే ఓకే జస్ట్ ఐ విల్ వెయిట్ ఫర్ 2 మినిట్స్ అండ్ దెన్ ఐ విల్ స్టార్ట్ బికాజ్ ఓన్లీ 25 మెంబర్స్ ఆర్ देयर Then okay, come or shall we start? Shall we start? Sa- Sajin ma'am. Hmm, okay. So yes students, good afternoon. Ma, students, good afternoon. Just raise your hands, all of you. Good afternoon. Let me see all are attentive or not. Those who have joined, raise your hands. And uh, all of you been uh, i told you please all of you rename rename as your uh, roll number meer per bedte meek attendance raadu nen cheptunnan malli malli cheptunnanu because i don't know ipudu ikkada vinay anni login ayyaramma vinay e roll number naaku ela telustundi nen attendance ela isthan ani cheppandi okay so all of you rename yourself according to your roll number otherwise you will get absent now i think yesterday we were discussing about uh, intrinsic career concentration i think these steps we have done right if you are able to see your notes uh, intrinsic career concentration what is intrinsic career concentration we said that intrinsic career concentration is number of charge carriers per unit volume and we know that in intrinsic semiconductor number of electrons and holes they are equal in number so that's why when we talk about intrinsic career concentration we'll take that uh, carrier concentration is nothing but having number of electrons and holes so it can be number of electrons or holes present per unit volume of intrinsic semiconductor is intrinsic carrier concentration and usually this intrinsic carrier concentration it is noted by ni and i think i have given you the steps in intrinsic uh, semiconductors what is uh, n n is electron concentration in conduction band p is number of holes in valence band so this n into p is ni square so ni square is equal to n into p and ni is square root of np okay this is what we have done and uh, in uh, previous classes uh, we have derived expression for electron concentration in conduction band as well as hole concentration in valence band i think we have done this derivation right and also i think uh, we have multiplied this we have done this or not yesterday oh. we have done n i square where we have multiplied expression for n and p students check your notes 
So after we multiplied expression for n and p, what is the expression for n? Expression for n is 2 into 2 pi m e star k t by h square whole to the power of 3 by 2 exponential minus under e f minus e c by k t. This we have written e f by k t. And what is the expression for p which is whole concentration in uh, valence gram it is given by this expression. I think this multiplication we have done yesterday. Right, Ma? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we have done multiplication. We got it as 2 to the 4. And what are the common factors? Here we have 2 pi kt by h square whole to the power of 3 by 2. 2 pi kt by h square whole to the power of 3 by 2. So 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2, it will be cube. And here what is left? m e star is left. And here m h star. Actually, you can write it as m h star or m p star. I think in last class, I have given as m h star. Keep it as it is only. So this whole to the power of 3 by 2 exponential. Of course, e to the power of a into e to the power of b is e to the power of e, a, a plus b. And if we simplify this, what we got, ma? When we have simplified this, I think yesterday I have done it. We end up having it as ev minus hmm, ev minus ec by kt. Yes. One second, ma. Here, if we simplify this in place of this, what we have exponential. EV minus. So don't panic seeing my handwriting in a digital slate. It will be like this only. Okay, so you'll get EV minus EC by KT. Now, what I have done in next step, students, just see what we have done in this step. What we have done. We know that what is the EG? What is EG? EG is forbidden energy gap, right? Yes or not? This is conduction band and this is valence band. And uh, this one is uh, EC, which is topmost energy level of, sorry. What is topmost energy level of uh, valence band? What is it called? E V M. -R. And what is bottommost energy level of conduction band? It is called E C. And what is this one? This is forbidden energy gap. And what is forbidden energy gap, which is given by E G? So what is your E G here? E G is nothing but E C minus E V. Emma. But here, what I got? E V minus E C. So this I can write it as this, this again, this term, I can modify it as exponential minus EG by KT. I hope you people are able to understand. So what you will get for NI square, NI square is four into two pi KT by H square whole cube, ME star, MH star whole to the power of three by two exponential minus EG. Why minus EG? Because here we have EV minus EC, but EG is EC minus EV, this gap, EC minus EV is our EG. So that's why here we'll get it as minus EG by KT. Then how to find NI? NI is our intrinsic carrier concentration. So here in this case, simple logic I'm using. So NI is nothing but NI square whole to the power of half. So whole to the power of half. So what is the square root of four? Two. And uh, if I take square root of two pi kt by h square whole cube, it will become three by two. And if I take half into three by two, it will become three by four. And uh, this one, it will become minus g by two kt because we know that exponential a, suppose it will half, if you have half like this, so what it will become? It will become it uh, as a to the, e to the power of a by so that is what we have given. So this is our final expression for intrinsic carrier concentration. I want you people to copy in your notes. I hope it is clear to everyone. Esma, any doubts? Any doubts, students? No, ma'am. Okay, then. If you are done with uh, copying, then we'll go for next concept. Yes. 
Shall I change slide? Do people have copied it now? I'm changing slide. Okay then. So what we are going to do next? Next is what happened? This is the last slide we have. Huh? Okay. Now, one second, Ma. So, coming to our next topic. So, next, what we are going to do? Next topic is all of you note down in your books. Next topic is finding where is Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor. So next is we are trying to find what is the location of Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor. So this is our next topic. So for this, what I'm going to do again, we know that uh, in intrinsic semiconductors, all of you do it along with me in your notes. Huh? So in intrinsic semiconductors, that uh, number of electrons in conduction band is equal to number of holes in one's band. And what is the expression for uh, number of electrons? Expression is 2 into 2 pi m e star k t by h square whole to the power of 3 by 2 exponential e f minus e c by k t. Okay. Then what is the expression for holes? Holes is 2 into m h star k t by h square whole to the power of 3 by 2 exponential. So it is EV minus EF by KT. Am I correct students? Are you able to see? Are you able to understand what I am doing? Ma, students. Mm -hmm. Then what I have to do? I'll cancel this two, this two. And what else will get cancelled? 2 pi KT by h square and here also 2 pi kt by h square will get cancelled. So what is left now? Now I'm taking this exponential term to the other side. So here exponential of EF minus EC by kt, okay, divided by exponential of 
so what we have here this term this term i am taking to the other side so what we have here ev minus ef by kt so ev minus ef by kt emma okay then i am taking remaining terms here uh, what got cancelled this 2 2 pi kt by h square is cancelled here we have m h star whole to the power of 3 by 2 and here we have m e star whole to the power of 3 by 2 so on the other side you end up having it as m h star whole to the power of uh, sorry m h star into m e star total whole to the power of 3 by 2 okay students i hope you are able to follow and you people know that e to the power of a by e to the power of b we can write it as e to the power of a minus b so similarly i am going to do it here so this we end up it has exponential f minus ec minus of ev minus ef and i think all terms have common denominator kt okay ma then what i have here here we have mh star divided by me star whole to the power of 3 by 2 okay I hope you all are copying this in your notes. Is it starting two lines? Okay, okay. Just uh, top two lines only. I'm uh, erasing. Okay, then I'm doing here. Again, I'm doing on the upside. Okay, who is that? Unmute yourself. Roll number 22. Sorry, mute yourself. Roll number 22. So here we end up having it as Here we have exponential. Hmm. What we'll get here now? Now, as you can see here, yes, EF minus of minus EF. So it will become plus EF. Roll number 18, mute yourself. So 2 EF. Roll number 18. Roll number 18. So here we have 2 EF into. As you can see here, both EC and EV have got minus. So that's why I'm taking minus common. So here I end up having it as EV plus EC. I hope you people are able to understand what I am doing. Okay. This is equal to what I have on the right hand side. M H star by M E star whole to the power of 3 by 2. Okay, ma. Now, next is I'll take logarithms on both sides. So if we take logarithms on both sides, so this exponential will go off. Then on the right hand side, we'll have ln. Right, students? We have on uh, left hand side, I'll add us 2EF by KT minus EV, roll number 12, mute yourself, EV plus EC by KT. And on the other side, we'll have LN, log to the base E. So MH star by ME star, whole to the power of 3 by 2. So this is LN. LN means it, it is to the base E. Okay, students. Then after that,
So on the other side, I'll take this minus EV plus EC by KT as plus EV plus EC by KT plus LN to the base E MH star by ME star whole to the power of 3 by 2. Okay, ma. Now I'm taking KT by 2 on both sides. Okay, first we'll take KT. So if I take KT on both sides, so 2EF will become this KT, KT will get cancelled. So here we have EV plus EC, right? Plus KT LN MH star by ME star whole to the power of 3 by 2. If you have any doubts, you can ask me students. Then uh, next is EF. What is EF now? EF is I have to take that two onto the other side. So it is EV plus EC by two plus this three by two. How can I write? Mom, I don't know whether you people know or not. LN into A to the power of M. We can write it as M into LN A. So same procedure I'm going to follow here. This 3 by 2, it will come here. So this will become 3 kT by 4. Why 4? Because here this 2 will also come to this side. So this is ln of mh star divided by mh me star. So this is the expression for Fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor. Using this expression also, we are going to do some numerical problems. Okay. I hope it is clear to everyone, Ma. Any doubts here? If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Have you copied this? Shall I erase this? My students yes, are you there? Yes, ma'am. 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 Okay. Now, once we got this expression, what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume one temperature. So let us take the temperature to be zero Kelvin. Suppose if I fix my temperature at At T is equal to zero kelvins. If I take T as zero kelvins, so what happens to the second term students? If I substitute T is equal to zero here. So in place of this T, if I take zero, what will happen? I think the second term will go off. So what is your EF now? EF is, what's the value of EF students? See that expression and tell me. From this expression, if I substitute temperature as zero kelvins, what happens to this equation? What is the value of EF at T is equal to 0 kelvins? I think we end mm -hmm. up having it as EV plus EC by 2. So at T is equal to 0 kelvins varies our Fermi energy level. What do you mean by EV plus EC by 2? 
Emma, what do you mean by EV plus EC by two? This is EC and this is EV. Okay, so here this is our Fermi energy level, which is exactly middle of topmost energy level of valence band and bottommost energy level of conduction band, and we know that this gap is nothing but EG. So where is our Fermi energy level? Fermi energy level is middle of forbidden energy gap, which is nothing but middle of forbidden energy gap. Here, one more point what you have to note down is EF, of course, it is EV plus EC by 2, and also it is equal to 0 Kelvin. One thing you have to keep in mind is where is our uh, forbidden, uh, sorry, Fermi energy level? EF, it is present at middle of forbidden energy gap. So, this also you have to keep in mind. Okay, students. So, this is about our intrinsic semiconductors. Now, just like we have done for intrinsic semiconductors, now we are going to do for extrinsic semiconductors also. So, for extrinsic semiconductors, there also we have to define what are extrinsic semiconductors. Then after that, what we'll do? We'll try to get carrier concentration and as well as this Fermi level. Okay. So, have you copied this? Shall we go for extrinsic semiconductors? If you have any doubts, you can ask me, ma. So, shall we go for extrinsic semiconductors? Yes, ma'am. Copied. Copied or not? Yes, ma'am. Copied. So I'm clearing. So next, now what we are going to do? Now we are going to discuss about extrinsic semiconductors. So till now we have discussed about intrinsic. From now onwards, we are going to discuss about extrinsic semiconductors. Are you able to see this PPT students? Is it visible to all? Ma, can we see my extrinsic semiconductor? Very good. By the dalga jabtu nara, your answer is chedi. Nidramohalu. So now tell me what are extrinsic semiconductors? See slider. If possible, try to copy in your notes. Okay, ma'am. What are intrinsic semiconductors, students? What are intrinsic? I think till now we were discussing about intrinsic. Now tell me uh, about those uh, intrinsic semiconductors. Hmm, fast. What are the examples of intrinsic semiconductors? Silicon and germanium. Germanium. Uh, so if we take silicon crystal, silic each silicon atom, how many valence electrons it has? Four valence electrons. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. So what these four valence electrons will do? They'll form four covalent bonds with adjacent silicon atoms. So there are no free electrons. So that's why 
are a semiconductor it's an insulator but when we go to high temperatures see in order to make intrinsic semiconductor conductor what we'll do we'll go to high temperature high temperature and once we go to high temperatures what will happen bond will break what do you mean by bonding of break uh, sorry breaking of bonding what do you mean by breaking of coal and bond what is the meaning of breaking of coal and bond electrons okay. move to yes electrons they'll take energy from temperature and they'll jump from valence band to conduction, conduction band. band i told you that that i told you that uh, this process it is called as generation of electron hole pair when uh, one electron jumps from valence band to conduction band then one free hole in valence band and one free electron in conduction band will be created okay and that, that is possible only if you go to high temperatures then what are extrinsic semiconductors so if you just look at this slide what are extrinsic semiconductors now see here what you have to understand here is in order to make intrinsic semiconductors semi uh, like conductors we have to go for higher temperatures but i want to make the semiconductors conductors at low temperatures are you able to understand students so one second Now see here, I'm talking about extrinsic semiconductors. So what are extrinsic semiconductors? So when we talk about extrinsic semiconductors, what we'll do? I'll take intrinsic semiconductors. Can you give me examples of intrinsic semiconductors? What are the examples? Silicon and, Silicon and germanium. germanium. Yeah, good. Then what I'll do? I'll add dopants. What we'll do? We'll add dopants or they're also called as impurities. So we'll take silicon or germanium and we'll add dopants or impurities. So if we add dopants or impurities to these uh, semiconductors, then what will happen? there will be increase in charge carriers at low temperatures so there will be increase in charge carriers at low temperatures So what do you mean by increase in charge carriers? Increase in charge carriers is nothing but increase in conductivity. So what are our extrinsic semiconductors? Actually, when we talk about intrinsic semiconductors, we call them as pure semiconductors. But when we talk about extrinsic semiconductors, we'll say that these are impure semiconductors. Can you tell me why they are called impure semiconductors? Yes, students? Adding impurities. Yes, because we are adding impurities. Good. So if they ask you to write about extrinsic, what you will say? Extrinsic semiconductors, how they are formed, we'll take intrinsic semiconductors and to those intrinsic semiconductors, we add dopants or impurities. And what is our purpose of adding dopants or impurities? We need to increase charge carriers at low temperatures. This point is very, very important. Seen it, extrinsic sem uh, sorry, in intrinsic semiconductors also, we are increasing number of electrons and holes. But what is our purpose in extrinsic semiconductors? Now we need to increase holes and electrons at low temperatures. 
we don't have to go to high temperatures at low temperatures itself i am able to increase number of electrons or number of holes it means that i am increasing their conductivity at low temperatures okay so those are nothing but extrinsic semiconductors and depending upon what type of dopant we are adding can you tell me how many types of extrinsic semiconductors we have yes students how many types of extrinsic semiconductors three type and yes so we have two types are, are you copying this in your notes copied shall i erase this i'm not over so yes ma'am just copy it fast fast copy it fast Next. I see here, students. Uh, what are extrinsic semiconductors? Of course, we have discussed. Now, this point you people write in your notes. So, depending upon what type of uh, dopant we are adding, so this last point, based on what type of dopant we are adding, extrinsic semiconductors they are of two types. What are they? P type and N type. Now, what we are going to do next is I'll take first N type semiconductors and we'll define what exactly are these semiconductors, and then as I told you, we'll try to get expression for carrier concentration and also expression for fermi level just like what we have done in intrinsic semiconductors so shall we proceed yes yes sir okay so any idea what are n type semiconductors ma Now look at first. I am going to discuss about n type. So just look at this slide and tell me what are uh, n type. What type of dopant we are adding? Hmm. What type of dopant we are adding? Pentavalent. Yes. So just one second. here i'll tell you about those semiconductors now first we are discussing about n type semiconductors okay now what are n type semiconductors for n type semiconductors first what i'll do i'll take intrinsic semiconductors okay so what are the examples of our intrinsic semiconductors silicon and germanium. germanium okay to this what i'll do i'll add group 5 elements can you give me example of group 5 elements yes phosphorus huh hmm. arsenic antimony etc so these are some of the examples of group 5 elements what do you mean by group 5 elements It means five that valence. they have five good they have five valence electrons okay and because they have five valence electrons they are called as pentavalent impurities pentavalent means in their outermost energy shell how many valence electrons they have they have five valence electrons now once i add such pentavalent impurities to intrinsic semiconductor what will happen for that again i'll come back to our figure so silicon crystal is there okay 
and if i take silicon we know that it is made up of silicon atoms and each silicon atom it is surrounded by four valence electrons so to this what i have done the added suppose i have added phosphorus okay phosphorus it has got how many valence electrons five valence electrons 1 2 3 4 and one more valence electron 5 okay now i have added one phosphorus atom to silicon so what this phosphorus will do it will go and first it will form five covalent bonds with adjacent silicon atoms So out of four valence electrons, sorry, five valence electrons, what it will do? It will form four covalent bonds with adjacent silicon atoms. And what about this fifth electron? I think this is our this we call it as fifth free electron. Can you tell me why I'm calling it as fifth free electron? Why it is called free electron? Any idea, students? Why it is called free electron? No bonding. because yes because it is not taking part in bond formation so free electron means it can move freely inside the crystal so if i add one phosphorus atom one free electron i'll get if i add 10 phosphorus atoms if i add 10 phosphorus dopants to silicon crystal how many free valence electrons i'll have 10 valence electrons so yeah. depending upon 10 free electrons So, depending upon how many number of dopants or pentavalent impurities you are adding, you will have so many number of free electrons. Okay, and this uh, energy level of this fifth free electron it is called donor energy level. So, energy level of of this fifth free electron. so what what is it called it is called donor energy level emma minko ardham avutunda nen rasindi ardham avutunda and this donor energy level it is denoted by ed okay and where is this donor energy level now i'm coming back to energy level diagram okay na so ipudu energy level diagram lo if we see this is our bottom most energy level of conduction band and this one is top most energy level of valence band and apart from this conduction band and valence band there is one more energy level what is that energy level it is called as donor energy level okay and what is donor energy level this energy level of this fifth free electron is donor energy level okay ma so at uh, if i go for temperature t is equal to 0 kelvin that is at uh, normal temperature so this donor energy level it is filled with those fifth electrons so at t is equal to 0 kelvin donor energy level it consists of here how many electrons i am showing in this figure 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it means that how many phosphorus atoms i have added seven phosphorus atoms so that's why i'll have seven uh, seven electrons in those donor energy level now this is the case at t is equal to 0 kelvin okay students but if i increase temperature if i go to very slightly above the 0 kelvin temperature then what happens so all this i hope that you people are copying in your notes this is very important for your understanding whatever i am putting it on the slide this is ed 